As I, I said, I spent the lockdown in uh, Vienna and I would just like to share with you some of the thoughts and problems I've been grappling with uh, during this period. Um, I think like many other people, one of the questions that I was thinking about was what is the right thing to do for Christian in, in this situation? And I think that the, this question became quite urgent for me, especially at the time of what specialists call, you know, the peak of the infections in Italy and Spain, where you had hundreds of people dying every day. At one point, there were 900 people. And, you know, I kept thinking about that from the point of view of the concept of solidarity. Now, I think that this is what made the answer and my, try, my attempt to think through the whole issue quite complicated because I think that solidarity itself is a very ambivalent uh, notion. In this sense, it's different from, say, compassion. Compassion has an obviously positive connotation. This is not the case with solidarity because solidarity uh, it implies at the same time inclusion and exclusion, those who are in and those who are out. And I think that this is very clear in uh, the stoic figure and notion of the circles of sympathy. However much you extend your circle of sympathy, still the majority of people are going to be outside it. So this is what I think makes the whole conversation about solidarity quite interesting on an intellectual level, but also morally quite, it makes you morally anxious. So um, um, I think that when you think about it from this perspective, the general question of what is the right thing to do becomes a very concrete question. Whom do you owe solidarity to? And uh, I think that in most situations in life, and especially at the time of crisis, you find yourself in a context in which you have a clash of solidarities. You have to actually decide between, you know, whom to give medical equipment to, whom to not to uh, give access to medical equipment, and so on. And um, I think that generally, uh, the way I thought about this crisis was as one in a series of global crises that we have been witnessing in the last several years. The one in 2008, the financial crisis, the refugee crisis in 2015, and the current crisis. And I think that there are two things that I find important about that. I think that we can see all three of them as tests of solidarity, and we can see all three of them as global crises that have affected the whole world. And with the coronavirus crisis, this is actually forced upon us in a very, uh, in a very obvious way. We are talking about a virus that doesn't respect borders. And in this sense, we're in a fundamentally <laughs> different position from, say, Adam Smith in the 18th century, who famously said that most of us would be much more upset about losing their little finger than the death of millions of people in a terrible earthquake in China. And now we literally saw how a terrible disease in China in a few weeks spread all over the world. Now, this is come <coughs> to my point that basically, if you have a global crisis, well, clearly it must demand a global solution. And this is how you come to the, to, to the idea of the very possibility of global solidarity. Now, uh, my hypothesis here would be that global solidarity is literally, in its most radical form, an invention of Christianity. It didn't exist in pre-Christian society. Even when we talk about the Stoics' idea of a citizen of the world, which is what comes to mind in the, in, in the context of cosmopolitanism and so on. Actually, what the Stoics meant was the community of the wise. And one should think that at the time and now, this is a very, very tiny group of people. So um, 
in this sense, I think that this crisis has brought to the fore the need to rethink the very possibility of global solidarity. And this is why I think that a Christian take on that is actually something which is very, uh, very much needed. It's not just an intellectual issue and it's not just of interest to people who, are, who happen to be Christian. Now, um, I think that when I say it's an invention of, of, of Christianity, I think that this can, we can talk about that for quite a long time, but I just want to summarize one idea in, in the Bible. Christ's repeated identification with the stranger. From this perspective, quite literally, when you let uh, Italian grannies die in hospitals in the north of Italy, you're literally letting Christ die. So, um, and I think that this, the, 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 the various ways in which we can actually flip, think through this, uh, this idea. And I'd like to finish, because I know I don't have that much time, I'd like to finish <laughs> with something which, uh, an idea that comes from my own small uh, field of research, Russian religious philosophy and Pavel Florensky. I thought that one of the ways in which he develops and sort of modernizes an, um, a Christian dogma uh, is quite relevant for, for our discussion now. He basically uh, looks at the dogma of consubstantiality and applies it to describing relationships between and among people. So it's not that we just share a common humanity. Many other philosophies and theologies have the same idea. A lot of secular philosophy has the idea of people sharing a common humanity. But it is actually a very radical form of sharing humanity when what you share, you share via the humanity of God. It is because of Christ, because of God becoming man and the incarnation, that the bond between us is, in a, in a Christian sense, is in a way much more radical than in other traditions of thought. So these are just a few fragmentary ideas, but I think they all revolve, in my mind, they all revolve around the ideal and the possibility of global solidarity.